Uh, what's, what's a really good perennial grass in this environment? Paspalum? Good, fantastic. So we've got some paspalum. Paspalum, big broadleaf, captures lots of sunlight, perennial. So here we've got some paspalum, so give me a nice finger. Nice finger, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> and over here we've got a cow. Nice finger from Chris. Thank you very much. Okay, now paspalum loves cows eating it because it gets rid of all that cover, allows the sunlight to actually get down to the, the growing tips, which are in the base of the plant, not at the top, down the bottom. Also creates ground cover, cycles the nutrients, does all that cool stuff for paspalum. So paspalum has a really cool relationship with cows. Cows love paspalum, paspalum loves cows. They do well on each other's relationship, okay? But in terms of stability of that environment, how stable would that environment be with just two species in it? As we said, you know, you have a season that suddenly paspalum's not thriving, bang, it's wiped out, both species. Or something happens to the cows, paspalum goes tall, gray, oxidizes, and basically kills itself. So we need to introduce more species, okay? So cows, cows also eat clover. Nice finger, thanks very much. Clover really excites nitrifying bacteria. Nitrifying bacteria also help earthworms. Earthworms produce a whole lot of extra nutrients for paspalum. paspalum. Okay, paspalum gets eaten by caterpillars. Okay, caterpillars get eaten by quail thrush. Okay, quail thrush also eat butterflies. Butterflies die and get digested by nitrifying bacteria. Paspalum loves the nitrogen from that. Um, Grasshopper, let's have a grasshopper hop in here, grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, grasshoppers get eaten by quail thrush. Okay, and quail thrush eat earthworms. And earthworms also produce a whole lot of nutrients for clover. So if you want to hang on to that for me. So now when we look at the resilience of this environment, okay, suddenly we've improved the resilience. <laughs> There's always someone in class who does it. <laughs> Again, the more species we can invite into any environment, the more stability comes in, the more resilience. The birds, bees, butterflies, elephants, the people around you. And if we simplify those communities, it leads to problems, okay? So if I said to you, <clears throat> this is our paddock, we've got lovely biodiversity, you know, if we have a drought or a flood, we've still, we still got a family, we've still got a business, okay? But we allow our cows to overgraze our paspalum. So even though we've only damaged paspalum, the caterpillars now disappear. Okay? What's happened to our cow? <laughs> you know, now how do we feed our family? So because of those connections, you get rid of one species, holistically it has an impact on a whole range of things.